series of videos exposing the Amish cult. Okay, and you say, well, uh, what's your qualifications for doing something like this? Well, let me explain. Um, right now, this ministry is located in the state of Maine, but uh, those of you who know me, those of you who know the past of this ministry, know that uh, <clears throat> we were originally in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and I was not a newcomer to Lancaster County. I was born and raised in Lancaster County. As a matter of fact, my ancestors go back many hundreds of years in Lancaster County. If you are aware of Mennonite names, uh, not so much among the Amish, but mostly among the Mennonites, the name Denlinger is a very well-known name. So uh, my ancestors were Mennonite, and um, my father actually had left the Mennonite system, and uh, but we were my grandparents were Mennonite up until the time of their death, and um, so you know I have a history of being raised in Lancaster County. As a matter of fact, I'll show you my birthplace here. Um, here it's uh, 60 Peach Lane. That's where I was actually, I wasn't born there, but that's where I lived for most of my life. I was born actually up at the end of the lane, little brick rancher up there on the left. And you can see the farmland that surrounds uh, that area. I was raised in a wooded area there. We had quite a bit of woods, uh, forest area back behind where I grew up. But um, the farm, um, you can see here on the map, the farm that's down in the valley, kind of to the left, I'll point at it here. This farm here was actually um, normal people, <laughs> call them normal, the Amish would call them English, even though a lot of times they're German ancestry, but uh, that farm right there, uh, when my parents first bought property up on Peach Lane, that farm was owned by non-Amish people. Um, after we had been living there for a while, it was bought by the Amish, and they converted it, took all the electricity out of it, and all that other stuff, and I was raised, those neighbors were Amish. Um, and I, interestingly, there was actually a BBC documentary talking about the Lapp family and how they moved from construction work to owning a farm, and right around that time that that was going on was about the time that we were moving from 60 Peach Lane, the, the, my, uh, place there I was born and raised. And that farm right there on that map uh, was actually the farm that was featured in the BBC documentary. So uh, definitely very familiar with, with me there seeing that farm. It was kind of strange seeing that. But up the road there if you go the whole way up to the end of Peach Lane where it turns off of White Oak Road, uh, right on the corner there, uh, there was a, well actually back in the woods a little bit there, I'll point to this, you can see that little green area that goes back into the forest, there was a, a peach tree orchard back in there, so hence the name Peach Lane. And this was, I think it was the Roars that owned that farm, it was bought by uh, the Stossfus family. And uh, most of their children owned these farms along Peach Lane going back into there. So uh, my point is, I was raised right in the heart of the oldest Amish area in America. Okay, so I was raised around the Amish. We visited with Amish. Um, you know, a lot of times when we would be out sledding in the winter time, the Amish were sledding with us. You know, so I was around that whole area. Um, so you say, but then it's not the same as being raised Amish. Well, let me tell you why it's actually better for someone like me to do this. These series of videos exposing the Amish system, because you see, if you know anything about the Amish. If you do things that go against Amish beliefs, the Amish bishop, basically, and then they have their ministers and they have deacons as well, but they will shun or excommunicate you. And if you're watching this, you're probably either shunned, excommunicated, or, you know, in room springa, and you're just a youth that's out there looking at these videos. Um, most people, you know, it's, it's against the Amish ordinum to go and watch videos obviously to have a computer or internet or things like that um, but you see what would happen is if I was ex-Amish 
I would have kind of a different view about the Amish because you see if I really came out hard on the Amish I'd never get to see my family again. You see when you get shunned and excommunicated the hierarchy within the Amish, Amish church that you're a member of and there are many different sects within the uh, Amish system they will hold your family basically hostage. They will forbid your family from speaking with you. And there are different levels of severity there. I know that sometimes, you know, there will be Amish family that will welcome back in their children even after they've left the Amish system. And you can sit down and you can eat a meal, but it's at a different table and all this other stuff. I understand that. Okay, but there are some more strict Amish that you can't even come back on the property. Because if you do, then you're risking your family being excommunicated and they fear being kicked out of the church, you know, kind of like what happened there and uh, with the blind man, you know, that, that Jesus restored his, his sight, he was born blind, and, you know, the parents are, like, afraid of being cast out of the synagogue there. Interesting. But, um, you know, so I have a unique perspective. And, of course, moving here to Maine, the area where I'm at in Maine, we have up north of us, there's a... a um, they're not Schwartz and Trooper, I think they're, some of them are, but they've gone to this Troyer sect now. And so there's strict ones up above us in the north, down south of us in Fort Fairfield, Maine, down south of us in Smyrna, Smyrna Mills, Maine, uh, there's a more liberal sect of Amish. But they both still are horse and buggy, they both still have all the ordnung, a lot of the rules and things. These ones up north are more strict than the ones down south. So, and, and I've I know people in both communities. So again, am I qualified to talk about the Amish? Yes, I am. Uh, very uniquely qualified, and I don't say that from a point of pride. I say that from just, I'm stating a fact. Okay, uh, my wife and I have studied quite a bit about the Amish. Uh, we have a lot of books written by the Amish. Um, here's one, the church and mission work. I'm going to be doing a book review on this thing. And uh, we have a lot of information on the Amish system and we will be bringing out quite a bit of it in these studies. And you say, but I don't understand. At the beginning, it looked like you were comparing Catholics to Amish. And, you know, why would you do that? Why would you have an Amish man that it fades into the, uh, a Franciscan friar, you know, a monk, basically, a Catholic monk, and then an Amish woman, and that fades into a nun? Well, because the Catholic Church is behind the Amish system. And I'm going to show you that. There are some major, major tie-ins with Catholicism that the Amish practice. And of course, like I stated earlier, one of the biggest ones is the unscriptural church hierarchy. And I'm going to be doing a sermon, um, actually going to be doing a book review of this book here, Amish Deception. This is written by an ex-Amishman named David E. Yoder. Uh, pretty amazing book. We're going to be doing a, a book review on that for part one of, of the Amish Exposed. And then I'm going to be doing a study from the King James Bible, I'm not a liberal modern Christian, and I'm going to be doing a study from the King James Bible showing why the office of bishop, as it is used by the Amish, why that office is abused and why it does not line up with the scripture. And I'm actually going to give you the scriptures out there, by the way, if you are Amish or ex-Amish, I'm going to give you the scriptures that you can use against this unscriptural bishop position to get back your family. Because I know how it is. I've known Amish that were shunned. Uh, I know Amish that, that uh, even though they might not be shunned per se, they go to a more liberal Amish church, you know, one that has a different ordinance, and they, you know, they still can't see their families, and their families basically treat them like they're going to hell, and it's, it's a very cult-like mentality. And by the way, if you don't know what ordinance means, it's, a, it's a, basically a Pennsylvania Dutch word, meaning the, the orders, the, the rules of a particular church. And room springa means that it's the time in the teens when the young people get to run around before they become official members of the church. It's kind of like, you know, get it out of your system, go fornicate, go get drunk, go do drugs, do, just live very, very sinfully. And then once it's out of your system, then you can come and become pious members of the church. And we're going to be talking about some things. You're going to be quite shocked. i um, just going to say this, another thing here. Uh, growing up in Lancaster County, growing up around the Amish, I heard a lot of stories and I, I, of child molestation, um, sexual perversion, stuff that I just, I, I thought that, no, that's too much. They're, no, they wouldn't be doing that. And um, through doing this research, I found that, yeah, 
Um, actually, those stories were true, and this book here, Amish Deception, confirmed a lot of my beliefs and a lot of my feelings that I had towards the Amish system. And uh, the Lord really put a burden on my heart and also upon my wife, um, her being more of a Catholic upbringing. She was Lutheran, raised very conservative Lutheran, and so she has more Catholic upbringing, and so she brings a different dimension to this study as well, and uh, she will be joining me for some of these different videos. But um, just some really amazing stuff. And another reason that I want to do this study is because I do have a very strong burden for the Amish people, uh, for the Mennonite people, the, any kind of a conservative in this whole system. They, they call themselves Anabaptist, but they're not really Anabaptist, if you understand what the Anabaptist system is. Um, this, this whole thing, Anabaptist just means people that baptize adults after they've been baptized as babies, you know, re-baptizers is what they're saying. But you study a lot of the, the classic system of the Anabaptist movement and the modern day Amish and Mennonites, Hutterites, and then there's one, another German branch which we'll be talking about called the Bruderhof, just means brotherhood, and a lot of these systems have departed from what things were originally. And they've gone back openly many times with Catholicism, the Bruderhof especially. They are openly teaming up with Catholics, openly on Catholic programs and things like this. I'm going to be showing some of that in the future. Um, actually, the monk, the Franciscan friar there, that it was at the beginning of the, the intro there, um, the guy with like the green robe on, uh, he actually interviews the head of the Bruderhof cult. And they're good friends and everything else. And the Bruderhof cult head right now has written books that were endorsed by Pope Benedict the 16th, Joseph Ratzinger. So, you know, I'm going to be showing the proof of this. I mean, it, the Lord has shown us some really wild stuff. But the whole point is here, I don't, I know one of the, the, the big things that happens with a lot of the Amish, because again, I've seen this thing, I've seen it firsthand. You are in that, raised in that cult mentality, that cult type of an atmosphere, and what happens is you go from the frying pan right into the fire. You say, I don't want the Amish cult thing, I'm not going to be controlled like that anymore, and they go, and they go totally off into the world. And it's like, you're going to hell here in the Amish cult, and then you go to the world and you're going to hell there. And what happens is, because you've been through some, such levels of mind control, such levels of this, you have to do this and you have to do that, all these unscriptural rules, you end up having a disdain for Jesus Christ and for the Bible and for Christianity. And you go off to the world and you just live like a wicked lost sinner out there, not understanding you've never experienced the real true salvation of Jesus Christ. You've never really truly experienced a true faith, a true experience of being born again. That's why I wanted to do these videos. That's the whole purpose of this. Okay, and I am going to be very honest with you in this introduction. I am a Bible believing, a King James Bible believing preacher. I was not raised this way. Okay, the Lord brought me to this stand. And when I speak, I believe this book is God's perfect inspired word. This is a perfect standard right here. So I will speak with boldness, and I will speak sometimes I am perceived to be very arrogant. Because I know that I have absolute truth in my hands, people think that that's arrogance. Uh, it's not arrogance. It's just being uh, understanding who God is and how He speaks to us through His Word. All right. So I'm going to be perceived to be a little bit blunt and brutal sometimes, but I'm a man, and I'm going to preach like a man. I'm not going to be effeminate. The Bible calls you know effeminate. It's a it's a it's a sin in the New Testament. I'm not going to be effeminate. So if your feelings get hurt because I'm a little bit too blunt. Well, I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to apologize in advance because I'll be very honest with you. A lot of this stuff makes my blood boil. If you want to get me mad, start talking about controlling people through religion. Um, salvation through Jesus Christ sets you free. It doesn't bring you into bondage. Okay, That's very important to understand. And there are things that God hates. And we're going to be talking about this in the study on bishops. Um, there are things that God hates, and one of them is the Nicolaitans, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Back in Revelation chapter 2, you read about that. The Nicolaitans are people that set up a hierarchy to control the laity. That is the Amish system. All right, so, and you know, and then I have these people treat me like I'm second rate because I dress differently. I don't dress in their uniform. 
that doesn't work for me. So, yes, I'm going to be a little bit sarcastic in some of these sermons. I'm going to be very to the point. I don't want you walking away from the sermons going, well, that was kind of a nice thing and I really didn't learn much from it. I want you to be convicted. Why? Because I'm concerned for your soul. All right? I understand that there's going to be a lot of Amish that are going to be burning in hell for all of eternity. It's not because I don't like them or I, I have my interpretation. or No, no, no. It's because you have, been, you have bought into a man-made system of religion that has no basis in Scripture. See, that's the whole issue here. What saith the Scriptures? What does the Bible say? And if you can't find your religion in here, then you better change. Okay? You will need a King James Bible uh, for these studies. You will need to have an understanding. And please, like I said before, do not make the mistake, if you're Amish, do not make the mistake of thinking to yourself, I don't want anything to do with religion because I've been through religion. You have not been through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Right? The Amish system, the entire Amish system, is all about external religion. It's all about cleaning up the flesh and putting down the flesh and all this other stuff. And if you've seen the study from last week, the St. Ignatius... Uh, or the Ignatian, Satanic Ignatian self-righteousness, you understand then that, that that is the basis for the Amish system. Putting down the flesh, crucifying the flesh, pain, suffering, going through all this stuff to merit your own salvation. Uh-uh, it doesn't work. Jesus Christ is the end of your self-righteousness. Your self-righteousness ends when you come to Him for a personal relationship. All right? And, you know... As I've been saying here, I'm looking at my different points I have here. You know, this, this, again, one of the lies about the Amish thing is they say we don't get involved in politics. And that might be true in the sense of not voting or not joining the military or something like this, but the Amish system is very political, extremely political. You know, and that's why it's so bad. That's why it is such a control. Uh, mechanism for people that are born into that system or people that are dumb enough to join it you know and you end up being controlled and it's just it's a real real bad system so and I'm also going to do something at the end of each one of these videos that I need to mention here and that is I'm going to put a link to our salvation video and in that video we go through the scriptures that will lead you into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ a relationship that you're going to go into and you're going to, you know, see that it's God saving you and you not saving yourself. Again, I've talked to Amish and it's, it's this whole thing of, um, well, if I believe if I don't do this and I believe if I don't do that, then I'll lose my salvation. I believe I have to continue this life and I have to continue doing this and I have to continue doing that to stay saved or whatever, or to be saved. A lot of times I'll even say that. That's not the system of Jesus Christ. That's not the system of true salvation. Let me show you a verse here real quickly. If you have a King James Bible, and you can pick them up all different places too. Go to a dollar store and get one. You know, go online here. You can get them online. Uh, Bible Gateway. There's like a, uh, a lot of different websites out there. Oh, this one's got a lot of notes in the back. Um... But a very important verse, because this is another thing that the Amish, Mennonite, uh, Bruderhof, Hutterite, that whole system, it's all this thing of being on a journey, being, I'm traveling, I'm, I'm one day hoping to attain salvation, I'm, I'm, I'm really wanting to become saved, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best and everything else. And you talk to them, and, and I have, and it's like, um, you know, well, uh, no one can really know for sure that they can be saved until after they're dead. Because you've got to live your whole life, you know, being saved. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. It says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You can know in this life, you can know that you're going to be in heaven when you die. You can know that. You say, by being a good person? You'll never know it if you're trying to be a good person. I mean, how many good works do you have to do before you can know? And what happens if you're doing lots of good works and you mess up and do a bad work? Did you lose your salvation? See, that leads to torment. Okay? 
But Jesus Christ comes and he puts an end to all that stuff. And he says, you can't make it. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross. I mean, think about that. If you can be good enough to earn salvation, why on earth would Jesus have come and died on the cross? It's very important to remember that. You can know that you can be saved. You can be broken to the point and say, I don't want to be in the Amish system. And by the way, let me just, I need to make another point on that. And that is you say, well, I'm still in the Amish system. I'm, I'm just looking at this thing, you know, without the bishop knowing. And I hope I don't get caught in all this other stuff. You know, how can I get out of the Amish system? Let me tell you something. You can get out of the Amish system while still in the Amish system. You say, what? What? What are you talking about? Jesus Christ. I would be a fool. Jesus Christ is the one who gets you out of it. I would be a fool if I told you to contact such and such a number and we'll get you an apartment, we'll get you a driver's license, we'll get you this, we'll get you a job, we'll get you English, you know, English clothes, we'll get you all these other things and then get saved. No, 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 no. No. You put your faith in Jesus Christ. You come to him as a sinner and then you watch what the Lord will do for you. Are you going to do it? You say, well, I've, I've suffered so much. Yeah, by the Amish. You've suffered because of the Amish, because of the Amish system, the false system of works-based salvation, the torment that comes from that. But you haven't suffered because of Jesus Christ. No, you have not. All right? You come to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, and you put your faith in Him, and then He will lead you out of that system. And you don't know what the Lord will do for you. Because I know, I understand what it's like. Okay? You turn against the Amish system, they will hold your family hostage. And all of a sudden, your mom and your dad and your brothers and sisters and everything else, they won't be allowed to talk to you. They won't be allowed to have anything to do with you. Why don't you let Jesus Christ see if He can work that out for you? Instead of going to your parents and saying, I'm running off into the world, I'm just going to go out. I'm going to. I'm going to live like the lost world. I'm going to. I'm going to try to get a job. I'm going to try to do all this other stuff. Why don't you come to your parents and tell them that you got saved, and say, "Dad, Mom, this system, this system can never save you. Our bishop doesn't know the Bible. Our bishop is an unscriptural man." And you're going to, like I said, I'm going to provide you with the scriptures in an upcoming study here, one of the Amish exposed studies on bishops. I'm going to provide you with the scriptures that you can show that he is unscriptural and you show your parents and you sh you get a king james bible okay and you know i'll just i'll throw this out there right now you want a king james bible you get a hold of us here and i'll send you one for free no cost all right and there's a lot of other ministries that will do the same thing there are a lot of bible believing christians out there that will help you but it would be foolish for you to want to get help before getting saved you get saved first, and then watch what the Lord can do for you. All right? So, I'm going to close this one here, the introduction, and we're going to start getting into some of these Amish exposed videos. I'm going to be talking in the next video about this book right here by David Yoder, uh, Amish Deception. And uh, this one here, uh, please make sure that you watch this. If you don't know about the Amish, um, this one is going to blow your mind. To be very frank with you this this thing blew my mind uh, this is a, a very very good book on the reality behind the Amish uh, this one will shock you uh, it is absolutely unreal and the rumors a lot of the rumors that I heard a lot of the stuff that I saw growing up and I just kind of well the Amish wouldn't do that stuff because they're just kind of simple plain people in it reading his book I realized that all those rumors that I heard I believe that they were true. And the reasons I saw these children that were really, you know, some problems there and things like that, I understand why now a lot of that stuff was going on. Okay. So, please watch the next video uh, if you really want to know more about the Amish thing. And if you want to know for sure how to go to heaven when you die, if you want to know how to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, please watch the salvation video at the end of this. Uh, message here at the end of this video and click on that thing it'll take you and it'll take you through the King James Bible I'm not a liberal modern Christian I'm not trying to get you to leave one cult the Amish and join another cult no 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 not not that at all uh, just want, want you to get saved and uh, 
have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And you can't have that among the Amish. Just as simple as that. Get saved. And then see what the Lord will do to get you out of that system. The Lord might even give you your family. Your whole family might leave. And you'll be the start of it. Right? But you aren't going to have that power, that spiritual power, unless you come to the Lord in a broken state as a sinner that cannot save yourself and you put your faith in Jesus Christ. So watch the salvation message for the scriptures and we will see you in the next video.